Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. Sounding the alarm, a prominent local doctor is telling Governor Whitmer it is time to take action to stem the surge of COVID cases before it's too late. Struggling to get the shot, the family of a homebound elderly veteran has spent weeks trying to get him vaccinated. Then they called the defenders for help. We got to begin, though, with Storm Tracker 4 and the threat of storms moving through the evening commute and on into tonight. We have seen near record temperatures, of course, for the past couple of days, but that actually makes conditions just right for storms, and we're hearing some rumbles of thunder. Yeah, we sure are. Let's get over to Ben now here off the top with more on what he's seeing on Storm Tracker 4. Hey, Ben. Hey, Sandra and Devin. Yeah, the good news first is that the marginal risk for severe weather has been dropped from the entire state, so that is good news. Now, there still may be some wind gusts in these storms, but you can see that the leading edge is just now slicing right through the heart of southeast Michigan. So let's take a little bit closer look at some of the winds. And you can tell that these colors are all the same. So these are all going in the same direction, at least around these storms. But some of these speeds are over 40 miles per hour. So again, some stronger gusts, but these should be below severe limits. Storm Tracker 4's wind detectors got a little bit of shear in some of these storms, meaning that a wind is changing direction with height just in a very small portion of that area. But as we track these storms, they're all moving to the north at about 40 miles per hour. So you can see that line. Uh, Troy, you're going to be getting that storm pretty much as we speak. Warren at 5 eight and then Shelby Township at this still holds together, which it does look like it will to 527 further to the north. Some of these places getting wet a second time. Flint about 509. You're going to be seeing this metamore at 524 or 525 and then Columbiaville at 534 tonight. There is a little bit of a gap. There are more storms to the south. So far, no warnings on any of these storms. We'll continue to monitor them as we head through the evening, guys. You got it right, Ben. Our other top story at five o'clock, the spread of COVID-19 not slowing down in Michigan. Our state leading the country with 7,819 new cases over the past 24 hours, 73 more deaths reported the past day, though that includes 43 from a review of vital records. Now this trend has Metro Detroit hospital system starting to fill and they are now sounding the alarm saying they're getting close to capacity. We are at more than 3500 people hospitalized right now with confirmed cases of COVID. That's beyond the 3000 threshold the governor used to justify the pause to save lives back in the fall. And as Armar McDonald reports, doctors are now calling on the governor to take action. Devin Sandra, I'll tell you the one thing that really struck me today in talking to these health systems is that the surge they are seeing right now is not comparable to last fall's numbers, which were bad enough, but the spring's numbers, which were worse. We are very worried about the accelerating pace of the new cases that we have seen in the state and the number of people being hospitalized with COVID. By the end of the day today, unfortunately, we expect to have over 500 patients admitted across our hospitals. Henry Ford stopped short of asking the governor for restrictions. Our appeal is, and whether it comes in the form of policy or just um, a behavior change, is we have to stop the surge. U of M's chair of surgery was blunt on Twitter about what the surge is doing and asking the governor for help. Beaumont is nearing top capacity as well, but is currently able to handle all elective surgeries. So we're afraid we may reach some critical capacities next week in our intensive care units. So I do think we have another couple of weeks, but if we could stop the new infections just by social distancing, I think we can at least stop it from getting worse. Tonight, the governor's office is still shying away from the restrictions they imposed in the fall, despite the worst numbers now. Quote, the important thing people can do is get the safe and effective COVID-19 vaccine to protect themselves and their families and help us eliminate this virus once and for all. All these health systems have made it clear that the only way forward and out of this is vaccinations and reaching herd immunity. Devin, Sandra, back to you. All right, Mara, let's take a look at where Michigan stands with the vaccine. As of today, five and a half million doses distributed statewide, just under five million thus far administered or put into people's arms. The University of Michigan hosted an expert panel this morning to discuss the vaccine and the current surge in Michigan. And one of those experts, Dr. Arnold Monto, the chair of the FDA advisory committee that recommended authorizing the current COVID vaccines, he says it will take nothing less than a community effort to fight the virus. We need to realize that it's not just a duty for yourself to get vaccinated 
but it is a duty to the community. Many parents ask the panel about how best to protect children who can't yet get vaccinated. Bonto said it's critical to prevent infections in the adults around them. Sooner or later, we're going to be able to vaccinate way down in age. But right now, this is another reason why everybody else should get vaccinated. Other experts warn the surge in cases also increase the risk for the vaccinated. When you have such high rates of infection as we do in the state right now, uh, and we were talking about, you know, 90% effective means if you were going to get 100 cases, you're going to get 10 cases of people who were vaccinated, if people were vaccinated. But if you have a 1,000 cases, you're going to get 100. Another focus, making the vaccine easier to get. Sometimes... Um, hesitancy is not true hesitancy, but yeah. it's a, uh, it's like, they don't want to spend an hour, you know, somebody doesn't want to send, or they don't have the ability to spend an hour on the internet searching for an appointment. It's on us to bring yeah. the vaccine to people and meet them where they're at. The best way to prevent more deaths, Manto says it's to prevent infections. People are still dying of this disease and we don't have a magic bullet for treating it. Now, all of the panel experts are fully vaccinated, but said that they've changed little about their behavior so far because of the high rates of virus in the community and also to protect their family members who are only partially vaccinated right now. Other news this afternoon today at the White House, President Biden taking a series of executive actions to try to confront gun violence. But he notes that even his efforts are largely symbolic as legislation remains mired in the Senate. Let's get to Alice Barr, who's following this from Washington. Alice. Devin, the president called the number of shootings in this country a national embarrassment. He's urging Congress to act while taking what steps he can on his own amid pushback from Republicans and calls from advocates to do more. Police in South Carolina investigating the nation's latest mass shooting that claimed five lives. While today at the White House, President Biden issuing an emotional plea and a promise for action before a small crowd of gun violence survivors. This is an epidemic, for God's sake, and it has to stop. The president under mounting pressure to deliver on his campaign promise of meaningful gun reform after a series of recent mass shootings from Atlanta to Colorado, Southern California to the latest tragedy in South Carolina, where a prominent doctor and two grandchildren are among the dead. Every day in this country, 316 people are shot every single day. 106 of them die every day. Today, President Biden outlining six executive actions, including requiring serial numbers and background checks for so-called ghost guns that are made at home and investing in community violence interventions. They can reduce homicides by up to 60 percent in urban communities. The president also trying to make it easier for people to flag family members in crisis who should be temporarily blocked from buying guns. But executive action only goes so far. The president urging the Senate to pass two House bills that increase background checks as Republicans dig in. It's not going to make us any safer. It just infringes on our Second Amendment rights. President Biden taking aim at one of the most divisive issues in Washington. The president also announcing he'll nominate a prominent gun control advocate to lead the Federal Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives. David Chipman was an ATF agent for 25 years. In Washington, Alice Barr, Local 4. All right, Alice. A father learns his sentence after being convicted in his daughter's accidental shooting. John Claude Norwood charged with child abuse in the shooting last July that happened in Redford Township. Prosecutors say Norwood's four-year-old son found the gun and shot his five-year-old sister thinking it was a toy. The girl survived. Norwood was sentenced today to five years on probation. The child's mother, Melissa Kaiser, was sentenced last month to five years probation on child abuse charges. Matt Prentice, one of Metro Detroit's most well-known chefs, has died at the age of 62. Prentice worked at many big-name restaurants all across our area, including Coach Insignia, Northern Lake Seafood, and most recently, Three Cats Cafe in Clawson, just to name a few. But what some might not know is that Prentice was dedicated to giving back. Rod Maloney has a look at his legacy. Matt Prentice was a guy who did multi-million dollar deals, had dozens of restaurants, a bakery, delis and the like. 
And yet, for all of his success, he was the kind of guy that would actually make and serve five-star meals to the homeless. Matt Prentice went to the International Culinary Institute and left early to take his last 200 bucks and keep his late father's unique deli open. He made and lost fortunes in the bare knuckle restaurant business. At one time, he swore he'd never put one in downtown Detroit, and then changed his mind after. The amount of money that they put into it, the amount of faith that a lot of really smart people, I mean, far smarter than I am, um, have put into this area is amazing. Later, he opened Coach Insignia atop the Rensen and expanded his empire. Later, he had to sell his interest in his company. And with a five-year non-compete in the area, Matt needed something to do. So he went full-time to work for his favorite charity, the Cass Community Services, where he started and worked in the soup kitchen. The Reverend Faith Fowler is going to miss her friend and former employee. He cared about people, and he, he never made them feel less than. Uh, I mean, he would, I'm guessing he treated people the same at Coach Insignia as he did in our soup kitchen. In 2019, Matt helped start up Three Cats in Clawson. His partner and close friend, Mary Liz Curtin, says Metro Detroit has lost much with Matt's passing. He adored cooking. He loved his charity causes. He was incredibly generous, not just with his money and his food, but with his, with his spirit and his um, education. He was a wonderful teacher. Matt was 62 when he died overnight. His brother said that he had fought a long battle with colon cancer. In the meantime, the folks here at Three Cats are going to team up with Cass Community Services, and they're going to have a memorial kitchen and restaurant in his honor. In Clawson, Rod Maloney, Local 4. So many people are going to miss Matt. He was really one of a kind. All right. Thank you, Rod. Much more to come here on this Thursday. Here's Hank. We all know boating season is approaching, but for an illegal dumper, this old boat has a new home in a Detroit school parking lot. Tonight, I'm going to show you what's being done to track the owner of this boat down and also what you can do to report illegal dumping in your neighborhood. A Macomb County woman tonight reaching out to the local four defenders. She is trying to get a COVID-19 vaccine for her homebound father. Oh, it would mean the world to me and my sister. Tonight, we are on the case.